There and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Hegarty here. It's our second video on core two differentiation, and we're talking about stationary points, the types of stationary points um, that there are, and how to find them. Right. I'm going to start by showing you a diagram, and it's important you draw this diagram. I'm going to talk about various things uh, along here. Now. In yellow, I'm going to highlight anything where the function is increasing. So along here, up to here, the function is increasing. Okay, so this just function is increasing. At the very top, the gradient is zero. Then it's decreasing. Actually, at this point here, the gradient is zero. If I drew a, ta a tangent there, it would be flat. So the gradient would be zero there, so I need to just put that as zero. Then we're decreasing to a gradient of zero again, and then we are increasing along here, up to this point. Again, the gradient is zero at that point. If I drew a tangent there, it would be flat, and the gradient here is increasing. In blue, I'm going to draw all the points where it's decreasing, so it's decreasing along here, and it's decreasing along here. So I'm just going to show that on this point, I'm going to say here that f dash x is bigger than zero here, or I could write dy but the x is bigger than zero. At this very tip point here, I'm going to say that f dash x equals zero, or that dy by dx equals zero. Along here, I'm going to say that f dash x is less than zero, or dy by dx is less than zero. At this point here, I'm going to say f dash x equals zero, or dy by dx equals zero. And similarly here, f dash x equals zero, or dy by dx equals zero. Or here, f dash x equals zero, dy by dx equals zero. And obviously, for these other points here, I'm just going to make sure I've got this filled in. For this point here, f dash x is less than zero or dy dx is less than zero and for these two points here for this for this section here and this section here f dash x is bigger than zero or dy by dx is bigger than zero so hopefully <coughs> you can uh, see that there now the names in uh, green the green things are called stationary points so stationary point, this is something we need to know the definition of. A stationary point, stationary point is where f dash x equals zero. Or you could say or dy by dx equals zero. That is a stationary point. So that's the first really important thing you've got to remember what a stationary point is. It's when f dash x is equal to zero or dy by dx is equal to zero, i.e. where the gradient is equal to zero. There's one of them, two of them, three of them, four of them on that picture. There are three types of stationary point. Type one, a local maximum. Local just means in the close by region. Can you see this point here must be a maximum? It's bigger than all, the, the y number is bigger than all the other y numbers very close to it. So that is a local maximum. And how you can identify a local maximum, this is how you would identify a local maximum. A local maximum has a positive gradient, then at the point of the local maximum has a um, zero gradient and then has a negative gradient. Can you see here? It, the gradient is positive, 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 positive. At the top, zero, then negative, 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 negative. That's a local maximum. It looks like this. In curved form, it, it will look like something like that. Can you guess what another one will be? I.e., can you guess what the name of this one would be? Well, that one would be our second type of stationary point, and it would be called a local minimum. And that's when you've got a negative gradient, a zero gradient, and a positive gradient, and they look like something like this. So here it would be positive gradient, zero, negative, and here is going to be negative gradient, zero, positive. 
And the last, uh, there are two other types we can have, actually. I said, uh, well, there are, there are three types, but there are two ways of showing them. The other one is called a point of inflection. And here's a point of inflection here and a point of inflection uh, here. That's either when you have a positive gradient, then a zero, then back to a positive, and they tend to look that type of thing, so the gradient would be there. Or they could have a negative gradient, zero, and back to negative gradient. So they look something like that. So there are three types, local maximum, local minimum, and point of inflection. And how would you identify them? <coughs> okay, so let's move on to how you would identify and find this stationary point. How would you find that stationary point, that one, that one, that one? Well, the first thing you do, here's step one. Step one, you would solve the equation dy by dx equals zero. Let's put in brackets y, because at a stationary point, the gradient equals zero. That's the definition of a stationary point. And that would find the x value. That would find an x value. If it's asking for the coordinates of the stationary point, step two, you would substitute x into original function y equals fx. And that would get you the y number. Then you would state x, y coordinates you found as the stationary point. Okay, so let's say we got, for example, x, y. Just imagine we got something like x, y is 2, 3. x is 2, y is 3. We could also identify what type of stationary point it is. And what you would do is you would do the following. You would um, work out dy by dx when x is a little bit less than 2. So think about it here. It's either a local maximum, it's either a local minimum, or it's either some sort of point of inflection. So what you need to do is work out dy by dx at something just before 2. This is x is 2 along here along these points. You would want it just before there, so you would want it maybe at x is 1.9. And then you would work out dy by dx when x is just past 2, something like 2.1, right? Now, if you got the following, if the gradient here was positive, let's say it was positive, so you knew you got a positive, then you know at the stationary point it's 0, and you got a negative at 2.1, you would know it's a max because it looks like that. If, on the other hand, you got a negative, and then you got a positive here, so you got a negative, zero, positive, you would know it's a minimum, because it would look like a U shape. And lastly, if you had any sort of combination of positive, negative, positive, positive and positive again, or negative and negative again, either side of 2, this was x is 2 all the way along, you would know it's a point of inflection. Okay? Right, we're going to work through three examples here to find stationary points. So let's do the first one, the most sort of involved one. Find the coordinates of a turning point of the curve y is equal to x to the power of 4, subtract uh, 32x, establish whether it's a maximum, minimum, or point of inflection by considering the, the points either side of the turning point. Right, let's state our function. y is equal to x to the power of 4, subtract 32x. They've asked us to find the coordinates of the turning point. So we all state what we're doing, to find. Oh, by the way, it's turning point is another word for stationary point. So I've called them turning point. That is another word for stationary point. So make sure you take a note of that so you know. 
To find a stationary point, I just put SP, solve the gradient function dy by dx equals zero. So let's work out dy by dx. dy by dx, we bring down the four, reduce the power by one, that's a hidden power of 1. We bring down the 1, so it'd be 32, like that. So we're going to solve 4x cubed, subtract 32, is equal to 0. Add 32 to both sides, 4x cubed equals 32. Divide both sides by 4, x cubed is going to be equal to 8, 16, 24, 32. So it's obviously going to be 8. And you take the cube root, and x is therefore the cube root of 8. So x is therefore 2. Now they ask for the coordinates of the turning point. So we're going to substitute x is 2 into the original function, into y equals 2 to the power of 4, into this one. Take away 32, multiply by 2. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 16, um, sorry, 16 take away of what we got here, 64. So 16 take away 64 is equal to negative 48. So therefore the coordinates, therefore, we have turning or stationary point at 2, negative 48, right? So we have found the stationary point. Right, let's move on now. And I'm just going to copy this again here into this section. And I'm just going to state that our stationary point was at 2, negative 48. So we know our stationary point is there. Now we are told to determine whether it's a maximum, minimum or point of inflection. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our gradient function, which we all we also found. That was our gradient function. All right? Now we know the following is true. We know dy by dx when x is 2 at the point x is 2 is 0. We know that's true because we solved uh, dy by dx is 0 to find it. So we're going to look a little bit before 2. We're going to look at dy by dx when x is, let's say, 1.9. And we're going to work out what it is. So we're going to put in 1.9 here. 4 multiplied by 1.9 cubed, subtract 32. So you're going to type that into your calculator. So we're going to type um, 4 brackets 1.9 to the power of 3 and come out of that and subtract 32 and see what we get. And we get a negative number. We get negative 4.564. So we get equals negative 4.564. Now what do you think we're going to do? Well, we're going to work out dy by dx a little bit to the right of, of x is 2. So we're going to, let's say, at x is 2.1. So we're going to put in 2.1 here. 4 multiplied by 2.1 cubed, take away 32. Calculate it back out. I can just press back, 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 like that. And I can just change that to 2.1. And I get the answer, 5.044. So I get 5.044. Now let's think what this is telling us. This is saying we have a negative gradient at 1.9. We obviously have a zero gradient at x is 2. And we've got a positive gradient at 2.1. So the graph is going to look something like that, a negative to a zero to a positive, which I'm sure you can see is a kind of a U shape. So therefore, that's definitely telling us we have a local um minimum, a local minimum. So we can therefore say, therefore, and the question was asking us, wasn't it, to uh, establish the coordinates of the turning point and state whether it's a maximum minimum. So therefore, at 2, negative uh, 48, we have a local minimum. Now, if I had got positive 0, negative, it would have been a local max. And if I'd got negative zero, negative, or positive zero, positive, it would have been a point of inflection. Right, two more simple examples. Find the greatest value of this function here. There are many ways of doing this. We could draw the graph, etc. But we could also use differentiation to find a local maximum, couldn't we? Because if I want the greatest value of this, I could find a local maximum, the x value for local maximum, 
put that into the function to find the biggest local y, which is going to be the greatest value of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve f dash x equals zero to find a local maximum. Okay, now f of x was equal to 6x to the power 1 subtract x squared. So f dashed x must be equal to 6 take away 2x. So we're going to solve 6 take away 2x is equal to 0. Add 2x to both sides, 6 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2 and we're going to get ourselves x is equal to 3. And to find the y value of that, y is going to equal 6 multiplied by 3 take away 3 squared y is going to be 18 take away 9 which is 9 therefore we have a local well we have a stationary point there we don't know if it's a maximum or minimum to be fair um, but we could uh, I think for a question like this you've just got to assume they wouldn't give you a question like this unless uh, if they're asking you for a greatest ma value, they, you can assume it's a local maximum. So the local maximum is at 3, 9. And it says, what's the greatest value of the function? Therefore, greatest value, well, they're asking the greatest value of f of x, of f of x. The biggest number it can be is y is 9. So we just say the greatest value is f of x is equal to 9. And let's do a similar example with uh, finding the least value of a function. Again, to find the least value, we can try and find the local minimum. In a question like this, if they're asking for the least value, we can assume that finding the local minimum will do. So we're going to find the local minimum by solving f dash x equals 0. Okay, so we know that f of x is x squared subtract 12x to the power 1 plus 8. So f dash x, doing the normal, will be 2x take away 12. So we're going to solve 2x subtract 12 is equal to 0. Add 12 to both sides, 2x is 12. Divide both sides by 2, we get x is 6. Therefore, the y number corresponding to that, we put x is 6 up here. So we're going to say it's 6 squared, take away 12, multiplied by 6, add 8. So the y number uh, would be 36, take away 72, add 8, um, which is going to be negative uh, 36, uh, add 8, which is going to be negative 28. So y is going to equal negative 28. So therefore, 6, negative 28 is a local minimum. And we can state that, uh, therefore, minimum value is fx equal the y number here, negative 28. And we're done. And that, in this video, is showing you how to identify um, a local maximum, a local minimum, or a point of inflection by looking at the gradients and by solving uh, the gradient function equals zero and also looking either side of the gradient function to see at whether you can identify the type of stationary point we have. Anyway, hope you found that useful. Thanks those for watching.